What up, Jordan? How are you, man? Good, good. How are you doing, Elliot? I'm good, man. I was trying to think earlier today. Do you even remember? I mean, how did we get introduced? Jeff. Jeff, Jeff Lopes. God yes. damn, that motherfucker, right? He's so good at this. He knows everyone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's just and I, all the pieces together. I get like a, I get a DM from him with somebody every every other day, and I'm like with him, me, him, and somebody he's introducing me to. I'm like, God damn, he's really fucking good at this. Yeah, he is constantly. Funny enough, he actually hit, hit me with a Happy Father's Day yesterday. Yeah, me too. And I, I'm not I'm not a father though. So. <laughs> I was like, thank you, I like, I guess. like, but not yet, not yet. I feel, I feel bad. I think, I think, I think he had a rough day yesterday, right? His dad had just passed, yeah, of uh, course. like, like two months ago. So, um, shout out to Jeff. I we hope uh, you are doing well, my friend. I know it can be a tough time. Well, I guess I don't know. My dad's hasn't passed yet, but I'm sure it can be a tough time. So, shout out to you, Jeff. Um, a little more on you, man. So I did your podcast last week and now yeah. you're doing my podcast this week. So, you know, my story, I want to hear your story. What, what is, what is the Jordan Edwards story? Where, where would you say it starts? Yeah, yeah, of course. So it started in uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey. Um, and essentially what happened was went to high school, was trying to figure out what was good for me, what I really wanted to do. And in, yeah, and in my town, everyone, you got to go to college. College or you're a loser. And I'm like, oh, God, I get – and I'm like, I'm at the point – because obviously college is very expensive. And I was like, why don't I just go to community college and then you can go figure it out? Like, we don't have to be forced into these social norms. But, no, we end up going to college and we end up going down to University of Tampa. And that's how I ended up getting into Tampa, Florida. And – we're at university and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do and where I want to go. And I ended up getting an accounting degree. And the reason for that is because I wanted to speak the language of business. I knew I wanted to get into my own business. I wanted to develop myself. I wanted to be my own boss. So fast forward, studied abroad, joined a fraternity, did all these different things. But for me, I, I ended up getting that full-time job and realized this is not the fulfillment I'm looking for. I need to do something for myself. So what I decided to do was in 2019, I realized that everyone's got year long goals. They set these new year's resolutions and then no one does anything about them. So I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick three things and I'm going to execute on these. Like I will not let up until they're done. So I did three. One of them was to run a marathon. At this point, I've never ran more than five miles for, at that point in my life. Uh, the second one was to start a business. And then the third one was to pass all four sections of the CPA. So while I was going into that, the CPA portion was where I was really focused on. Uh, I what had a what buddy, is that? Tell, tell me what that is. Just tell everyone. Yeah, just in case. certified public accountant. So it's okay. just, it basically brings me even more off the track that I'm trying to get on. <laughs> Because I'm trying to run these two paths. <laughs> I'm trying to run two paths parallel of let me be this thing that my parents want me to be, have a full time job, get a CPA, be in a big four accounting firm, all these things. And then at the same time, I'm like, I just want to be a business owner doing my own thing, accomplishing my own goals. So I'm trying to run these parallel. And I think there's a lot of people who struggle with this. Um, Let's let's stop on the college thing, right? Because I agree with you. Everyone has to go to college, right? And it's just, I mean, my biggest thing with college, I would say, is like uh, an athlete. I, I fucking hate that an athlete has to go to college to be to make it in the NFL or like it's such bullshit. It's just like they're just they're just being taken advantage of. That that's all that's happening. And then Absolutely. for like some. And then some dude who like has no business going to college is like forced into college. And now you come out with all this debt, probably like. Ugh. Absolutely. I mean, let's start off with the NFL, the players. These guys, a lot of them come from a lot of them come from fine backgrounds, but a lot of them can't afford it. In which case they are getting marketed. People are. I remember Reggie Bush was getting his jersey was selling out everywhere after that game with the Texans. 
with uh, Texas when it was uh-huh. uh, USC in Texas. It was the Rose Bowl. His jersey sold everywhere. He's like, dude, I'm eating. I'm trying to get dollar size pizza because I can. Yeah. Afford how it. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 25. Okay, so man, look, it gets the the first set of this was the Fab Five, okay? Yeah. At Michigan, did you watch that documentary on ESPN? I did watch that documentary. Dude, black socks, black socks, like black socks were for poor people before the Fab Five, and that's why they wore black socks. <laughs> and then Nike was like, "Oh, these kids are wearing black socks, and they're famous." And boom, billion dollar industry, black socks, black athletic socks. I'm wearing. And they saw black none of it right now. I'm wearing black yeah, socks. Yeah. Right yeah, they saw none of it. They saw none of that money. They were just taken advantage of. And they're yeah. doing this to mostly poor kids. Like, yeah. broke. Like, those guys, all five of those dudes were broke. And yeah. you're telling me I can't have a you, – you're telling me this dude over here can't go buy me a piece of pizza? <laughs> I can't sell a couple <laughs> autographs? Like, come on. Yeah, it, fuck it, off. It's ridiculous because they can't even afford anything. And their family's just trying to make it. And they're mm-hmm. waiting on him to go to the league, especially these star players. And it's like, when are we going to get paid? When are we going to get paid? When are we going to get paid? And they don't even get the opportunity. Yeah. So that, I mean, okay. And that, but that's the rare case. The, 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 the worst, or not, I don't think the worst case. I think it's just as bad for the people like, I don't know, Kyle, what is, look, if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, uh, an accountant, yeah. if you know that's what you really want, like if this is your thing, then by all means, please go to college. Like a I, teacher, probably go to college. Absolutely. And then what happens is, first of all, most of these 18 year olds have never made $60,000 a year, let alone to pay for all four a year. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So no mm-hmm. one's have any substantial knowingness of what the money is, in which case parents are like, hey, I worked really hard so that my kid can go to college because I was told that was the American dream. But if people are coming out and getting paid on average $50,000 a year, that's on the high end. How right. is 50,000 going to pay 60,000 each year? It doesn't make sense. In which case you need a wealthy relative or a wealthy parent to come in and just say, Hey, I got you. Right. And I do believe that college education is for the poor. If you are broke and poor and you need to get educated, that that ed- education is the way out, in my opinion. You you need to learn. It might not be college. It might it could be a skill. It could be a, a trade. It's something you need education because, uh, like for example, your your you, the opportunities are not going to be laid in front of you like they yeah. are for. Look, I'm not I'm not poor. Like my kids are going to have plenty of opportunity because we're not poor. Uh, yeah. I had plenty of opportunity because I'm not poor. I didn't grow up poor. So uh, I do think it is like education is the way for poor people. But still, if, you, if you're telling that poor person they got to go 150 large in debt. Huh. Yeah. And no one thinks about it because it's, hey, we were told we were supposed to go to college. Right. And then you right. get left with the egg where it's like, oh, my God, what am I supposed to do? And if you look at these banks. The banks are giving out money to student loans, like no problem. Like, oh, you want another hundred grand? Go for it, man. Like, Go take for it. Money. You want to start a business though? They're like, mm. small hands, alligator arms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then while you're in college, the credit card company starts sending you credit cards with, you know, so you can go into more debt. Yeah, and no one was ever taught this concept. And like for me, like one once I graduated college, I sat there and like. I don't have that much student loans. Like my parents covered me majority of the way, which I'm You're one of the lucky ones. Me too. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So what I did was, and this dives into, I, I put my loans into an amortization table because I had the accounting degree. Amortization table is basically looking at your interest and your principal, how much you pay on that. So like, let's say you have like a hundred dollar payment and you have multiple loans and it just allocates a certain amount to each of the loans. So when you have that, then you'll realize how much am I paying off each one? So like, let's say, let's make them really small, like easy numbers, like a hundred dollars, right? So you have a loan and like, this is what happened to me. I had four loans and my fourth loan was the highest principal. Like, so the highest amount of money I owed with the highest interest rate and the loan company is like, you don't have to pay this one for four years. 
and but, but it really incurs interest the that. whole time. Yeah, there's interest the entire oh, time. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, you guys can go kick rocks. I'm not falling for this. This is insane. But every kid falls for this. Absolutely. Yeah. I had a kid, so I realized this. I was like, okay, Jordan, you realize something that's valuable. So what are we going to do with that? We're going to go find another kid. Uh, we're going to go tell our friends, see who else we can help with this. So right. the first person I met with, he showed me a student loan. He's like, I know I got loans. I just don't know what's going on. So I put his loans into the amortization table. The, his minimum payment, which was say like $300, wasn't even covering the interest on his loan. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, buddy, Here's what's going on. You gotta pay more. And he's like, but they told me to pay the minimum. No, no. Of like, course. You, yeah. They they want like, you. <laughs> exactly. And we really gotta take this financial. It's like a prostitute who says you don't have to wear a condom. What? It's like a prostitute who says you don't have to wear a condom. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you're a big if you're a wealthy dude and you do that yeah they're they want every money they can everyone uh -huh. if i loan you money i'll tell you not to pay me so that i can get interest like not me but you know what i'm saying like that's yeah. how the banks are operating they're like hey if we can keep them in debt then that'll give us such an opportunity you know what i mean so this is you like the beginnings of you like starting to see this financial thing which is like the the, the field we're in we'll, we'll get you the field you're in we'll get to it but this is the beginnings of it right this yeah, is the beginnings exactly. of like you finding your your groove here a little bit exactly and me kind of realizing that hey like you can go and work a regular job and get paid and do that and do a nine to five and then come home watch tv have a beer that's a lifestyle Another lifestyle is maybe working that nine to five job and then doing something on the side after work. That's a lifestyle. Like what I realized was because every time I kept explaining what I was doing to people, they're like, oh, go be a financial advisor. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't really want to do that because then you might just be selling their product and it might not be in the person's best interest. So it just runs these it really is what motivates people. You know what I mean? Why does someone do a podcast? Why does someone sell you that option? Why does someone want you in that stock? Why does someone want you to do something? Where are they incentivized on the path? You know what mm. I mean? Yeah. It's that's a, that's always, it's always the question is what, what, where are they incentivized? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's everyone's going to get paid. Everyone's going to yeah. get paid <laughs> somehow, somewhere. somehow, yeah, somehow, you know, uh, me like personally, I, I try to make my payment with how I feel, how the how the thing makes me feel. Yeah, but but I'm gonna get paid, right? Yeah. I'm I'm gonna get paid. So yeah, and we have every, to be, cognizant yeah, of that. Go ahead, what you say? We have to realize we have to realize that whether that payment it can come in how you feel, what you what money it can come in mm -hmm. more time. That payment mm -hmm. can give you more time. You get someone to clean your house. You don't have to clean your house. Right. You can have time with your kids and family. Like, right. Yeah, no. There's there's a uh, everything has a cost, my friend likes to say. Yeah. Right? Every every single thing has a cost. There, nothing's free in the world. So, um where did this lead you to? This realization that uh cuz I I had the same realization. I uh I worked some odd jobs as I was coming up, like fighting, but I never wanted to fucking have a job. Like like yeah. the, the idea of a job just like shoot me in the fucking head. So uh, <laughs> like where where did the, where did where did this take you? I don't want to work for somebody yeah, else. So, I mean I mean for me it's taken me on this path where now I have these so if we fast forward a little bit, we do in the personal finance with people realize that that's not the most effective way because personal finance is huge, but to do it you gotta have really deep emotional rapport with people because it's a sensitive subject. So now we're looking at your whole self, you know what I mean? In the regard of, I, I basically came up with this, it's mental health, I just broke out my theory on what I think is a, a happy life in regard to mental health, which I know you're passionate about, physical health, community service and philanthropy, and then relationships and then spirituality. So I broke it out 
five different ways. And I realized that like, you might be winning at work, you might make the most money, but you might be miserable at home. So how can we be happy with everything we're doing? You have what to were those five, what were, Yeah, what were those five categories again? I wanna go through each of them. Yeah, 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 it was mental health, physical health, community service philanthropy, relationships, and that could be close family, friends, uh -huh, or it could be uh -huh. business relationships, whatever you want, and then spirituality. Because I want to start religion. Yeah, but yeah. Let's start with mental health. What, what do you, what do you call mentally healthy? Like, what are your steps for mentally healthy? I, exactly. So, I mean, when I when I go through this process with people, I'll sit there, and it's incredible because we'll go, "What's your five year plan?" And they'll dive in and dive deep, and it, it's incredible because some people are like, "Hey, like, I hope I hit VP, or I hope I do this." <laughs> you know what I mean? Or it's, "I hope I have a family." It can be whatever you want it to be. But it's cool seeing their goals because once you have a goal, you have a direction. That's one of the most powerful things. I think you just need to know at least where you're going. And then when we yeah. dive into the, yeah. Go, go, no, you go. Yeah, when we dive into the mental area. So I'll be like, hey, where are you at mentally today? What, what goes on with you mentally today? Like, so for myself, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good. I woke up, like everything's going well, blah, 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 blah. Where, what's a 10 look like to me? So I'll come up with a 10 for myself. Like for myself, I know I need to work out. Like that helps me mentally. I know that's a physical element, but for me, I need to work out. I also need to, I do this priming activity. It's what Tony Robbins does. It's essentially when you sit there and you come up with three things. It's a breathing exercise. And then you do gratitude, three things you're grateful for. And then you do... It's like a healing circle. It's super interesting. If you look up a video on it, you can hear more okay. about it. And then the last uh, part- I, I have a routine every day too for my mental health. So go ahead. Yeah, and then the last part is visualization. So that's where you visualize three things you want in your life to excel in some sort of capacity like you've already done it. Um, so what I like to do in the morning is I'll work out, prime, and then I also wrap to fill in, which is I'm Jewish, so with that, it's basically getting you in touch with God. And then I like to read a little bit. Um, so for me, those are the four things I go, if I do this, I will have an incredible morning, in which case I will have an incredible day. Like, you know what I mean? Because if you really get it started in the morning with your mental health, you sit there and you go, how can I have a bad day if I've done this? <laughs> like, the only for I agree with you, because for me, the only way is if somebody in my family gets sick or dies. Like if, yeah. if, if one, if, right. So like, it's like that's, this massive catastrophe that has to happen for me to have a bad day. That's another rule of mine. I say when people come on and they complain, not, not like come on a podcast, but just come in right. general, like hop on a phone, how's your day? Go, oh, dude, terrible. And I'm like, you are only allowed to have a bad day if someone dies. That that's it. Like that is it. If your car crashes, you'll get a new car. Like, my girlfriend was cleaning the sheets yesterday and it ripped. And I go, we'll buy new ones. Yeah, you, it you upset crash. for 30 minutes is not worth that much money. No, like, buy no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, man, I've been, my wife just quit her job. Uh, she had, she worked as a nurse practitioner uh, in a hospital. And she also has a side gig, which is now her only gig, her main gig. I've been trying to get her to quit her fucking job for five years, five to seven years. Cause I'm like, look, the, the amount of money you bring in and look, she's a nurse. Like, it's not like small. Right. But it's not, yeah. it's not worth you being grumpy to me. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I will actually no, fuck you this. Not to be grumpy. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, yeah, yes. <laughs> right. Like, I, yeah, I would. And she's like, well, health insurance. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Health insurance. Renee. I was it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. I was like, we'll just pay for it if we have to. Like, yeah. like this is the shit like, that like, but I hate saying this. That, that poor people worry about. Like, if you can't afford health insurance, then I get it. You got to go work a job where you get health insurance. But once you figure out the game a little bit, I was like, baby, get the fuck out of here. Health insurance is why you're working. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's also another concept of like, most people don't see it from those other viewpoints. So you need right. to get other perspectives. Yeah. So what do you do? How do you help people in, what did you say, spiritually? Like, you know, like what would you yeah. call spiritual health? So like spiritual for me is I got in touch with my rabbi and I ended up meeting with him 
when I was in Tam, we would meet every Tuesday. And what we would do is we would wrap to fill in and go over a chapter. Cause I'm like, I don't need to do too much religious stuff, but I need to know that I'm in touch with it. Or some people, they like praying, they like meditating, they like whatever works for them. I'm not the guy who says, hey, you have to do this spiritually. You have to be in this type of capacity. If you don't want to think about anything spiritually, that's okay. That's up to you. But I'm just opening you to the opportunity of what might be possible. Yeah, I don't think it works without it. I think I think you have to have a spiritual side. Um, yeah. Whatever your yeah, God, I mean, whatever your God is. I would absolutely. say absolutely. You got to talk to it. In some sort of capacity, in some way, because mm -hmm. we don't get as lucky as we are, especially with your story, without being able to have someone watch over us and help us in some capacity. Oh, I, I disagree with you here. I don't, I don't believe he cares about you. I, I don't believe God cares about you whatsoever. So, you know, we disagree on that. But um, if there's, there is a power that I can't understand. So that's what that's what I personally call God. So, so how do you get involved in that? How do you figure out that there's someone there, but he doesn't care about you? I don't know that there's someone there. There's a thing there. It doesn't have yeah. to be. It's not necessarily a person where he's not. He's not watching me. He's not judging me. You know, where I don't know why I say even he it. You know, it's just uh, it's just something that I can't quite grasp. That is like hanging out. Yeah, it's like an it's like an energy for me yeah so but yeah it's not uh i'm not super concerned with it i would say i talk to it all the time <laughs> but but i'm not super concerned with yeah i don't know i don't know how i, I i'm a weirdo so it's, it's no okay. it's interesting my biggest thing and the whole reason i started this podcast like not this podcast my right i got podcast, it yeah. my own one um was to honestly get other perspectives was to get a broadened perspective so when you say something you're like i'm a weird you're not a weirdo you yeah, but thing works for you. yeah no like, for sure i'm fine with being weirdo though bro like it's <laughs> i've been a weirdo my whole fucking life I, I could care less i used it used to bother me and now i'm just like ah fuck it i'm a weirdo yeah. but we're all but we're all weirdos that's the thing you know is I, and the I more did. we can realize that the better i think a big element of that too is embracing it mm-hmm and embracing mm -hmm. that who we are it's okay that i'm not fitting into this mold because i think that's the hardest part graduating college and then i started at a full-time job and my parents are like good and i'm like no i want to quit that job like you know what i mean it's just it's a give and take because like growing up to be what your parents want you to be is very and you're realizing that's not who i want to be and you really got to only be who you want to be who you I think are. it came. I think it came from their parents, though, right? Because their parents were right around either the Great Depression, or right after the Great Depression. So, uh, a skill and education was this thing. You know, lawyers and doctors are always needed. You know, engineers yeah. are always needed. So, if you can go be one of those things, and a teacher is always needed. That that that's where this education mindset came from. So they. they like our, it was forced onto our parents. It worked out for them. And then it was forced on. And then it's like, okay, you do the same thing. And now you see younger people going, no, fuck that, man. I'm not doing that. Like this, I, I don't want two and a half kids and, and a white picket fence. And, and you're seeing people, the, the downside when you talk about mental health and spiritual health, like you're seeing the downside of people making these decisions, right? The Xanax moms and the dads that fucking drink on the weekends. and Oh my and, God. And they have it's crazy. I, yeah. I sit there and I think about it and I go, I was telling my girlfriend, I'm like, D she's like, why do you think people like act like that? Like over drink too? I'm like, they have too much time. They literally have too much time <laughs> and they're not trying to, they're not on any, there needs to be some type of mission of some capacity. And that's why I say community. Mm. Even if you want to coach your kid's baseball team, be the coach. Like, you know what I mean? Dedicate the time. Do something that takes your time in a fulfilling manner. You can't just sit there and stare at the screen and hope that something's magically going to make you feel better. <laughs> what's, your, mm. what's your morning routine you mentioned? Oh, so I wake up and I meditate. I have gratitude. Uh, thank the universe. Uh, I repeat my I am's and I make the four agreements. 
uh, every day. And then I get up and I, I, I make a coffee, I read, and I get to work. I yeah. love it. So, yeah, but every, you know, and then I have nighttime routine too, where I, uh, I, 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 I just thank everyone that loved me. How do you, you know, do that? I just, just, mm, I just get down on my knees. It looks like praying. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just get down on my knees, I put my head down on, on my meditation pillow. Uh, I hold my beads and, um, uh, I just say people's names yeah. and then I, and I tell them I love them and I, and I, and that's it. I love that. Yeah. I just want to make sure everyone, I want, I want the universe, which is my God yeah. to, I just want to put it out there. You know, I want to put it out there and it's kind of weird. I start to receive a lot more back these days. Yeah. And I think one of the best things about that is that you shows you how scarce time is. And if mm-hmm. you like, I learned about this with the relationship with time, if you're open to it, if you think we're going to last forever, then you're going to sit there and just enjoy the new Netflix show. If you think, Oh my God, there's not much time. Then you get urgent with it. And then you get grateful for another day. Yeah. People, we, we act as though we will live forever, even though we know we won't. Right. Yeah. We know we won't, we know we're going to die, but we don't go about our days like that. Right. We, we yeah. waste time. And I, I don't care what, what you call time. I mean, you tell me your perspective. Like my kids love sports. So I love to watch. I love to watch sports with my kids. It's like a bonding thing. Now yeah. look, yes, we are sitting there watching sports, but we're doing it together. So to me, that's not a waste of time. It doesn't always have to be this grind that you hear like, Oh, I work. You know, and, and I do agree with nine to five and then more, but I like to watch sports with my kids. Yeah, but at least it's a shared experience with them. Yes. So if it's not like, so for example, like last week, me and my girlfriend were just going for a walk and then we saw, I saw this rooftop and I was like, why don't we just grab a drink? You know what I mean? It's a Tuesday. We'll hang, this will be a better experience than us just hanging out on the couch. And it's very simple, but how do you make the most of each opportunity? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's how I try to view it is like, what is the most impactful thing I can do right this second? And like, if I'm going to spend this time with this person, then what is that? Is that cheering for our team in the championship? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, who doesn't love a good sport? It brings camaraderie like no other. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, what was COVID like for you? Like, uh, like you're a little younger, you know? Yeah. But you do have your own business and everything. What was the what was this last year and a half like for you? Uh, honestly, it was, and I know most people aren't going to like this, but I thought it was amazing. Because what, oh, wow. what I did was it it shrunk the world. So it shrunk the world in regard to we can connect. I'm in Tampa, you're in Denver. Like, how else are we going to do that? You want me to fly to Denver? Like, we can, but you know what I mean? Then you're looking at all these I'm different not, I'm not Joe Rogan yet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for me, it gave me a couple different things. Like, the first place, it gave me access to people I wouldn't be able to access. And it also made the barrier to entry so small. So for us to hop on a phone call and we would just talk about what, like, just, you want to have life? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm, tell me what's going on. Like, we're just talking, but I was inspired to make this podcast because I realized that I could connect with people on a different level. So for me, I've done a lot of different things. Like I made the podcast and then one of the coolest things I did, which most people won't even consider, was everyone was working remote at the time, right? Like remember that March, yeah. April, May, June, like everyone's remote. So in August, I was dating this girl for a couple months and I told her I'm leaving, like I'm done. Like I'm not staying in Tampa. If I stay in Tampa, I'm just gonna resort back to my college days. Like I need to explore and grow. So she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm gonna put all my stuff in a storage unit. And I'm gonna travel around. And I'm going to, she's like, what do you mean travel around? I'm like, well, I'm going to rent out a place each month. So she's like, all right, screw it. I'm in. So I remember we left and this was a decision. Like I, I've been, I was rejected. Like I invited 
my friends we originally had the idea with, I was like, guys, are we in or are we out? Like, and they're like, we're out. I'm like, guys, come okay, whatever, on to the next. And I've invited several people, but I made the decision that I was gonna do this. So on this trip, I ended up going with me and her, and it was incredible. We ended up leaving Tampa, went to New Orleans for a day, Dallas for a day, and then we were made it over to Denver. I was in Denver for a month. And then we went out to Salt Lake for three weeks, Nashville for six weeks. And then we both went did home. You drive or fl- did you drive or fly? Oh, I was in my car. Because my oh, car, yeah. you have the flexibility of doing whatever you want. Right, right. I, I Because re- on the weekends, you're like, okay, like we were in Salt Lake. And I'm like, let's go to Zion. So we just drove the car there. Right, you get right. another Airbnb. And I was like, this is so incredible. And no one's doing it. Like and Airbnb is cheap as fuck because no one's traveling. They just need rent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone needs a renter. Everyone needs places. Like, I was like, this is great because I don't have kids at this point. Like, mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. like, why don't I go and experience life? And like I said, it brings you back to the moment of what's the most important thing I could do at this moment. And to me, it was that travel element that allowed me to expand my mind, expand, see new things. And I'm sure it kind of probably solidified your relationship it solidified or ended the relationship with the girl right like you get this oh learn so much more about her it. yeah the first 30 hours right 30 hours it was tampa and you look at the, all those trips it's 30 hours just to get to denver from tampa driving sure. wise i was like she's gonna hate me or i'm gonna hate her or we're both gonna love each other and it'll be awesome right yeah expedited yeah. time we- with each other with yourselves yeah that's amazing Elliot, we, she's like, yeah, I can't believe we've only been dating for like five months, 10 months, like whatever it was at that time. And I'm like, well, we expedited time. If you look at a normal dating relationship, what they do is they'll sit there, they'll go on a first date, they'll wait maybe three or four days, do another one. And like, okay, now time's passing. And then by the time you're really like, okay, we're dating, it's like three months in and maybe you're hanging out like two, three times a week. We were going on a new experience every single weekend. Like we went to uh, um, everywhere, Zion National Park to Nashville and just- It doesn't matter, you're doing something, you're figuring it out together, right? Like, so yeah, you are, you're, you're in the fight, you're in the game, whatever, whatever you wanna call it together. And like, you have to either, it's either gonna work or it's gonna be over. So yeah. it sounds like it worked. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it worked out perfectly. It was awesome. And cause I mean, if you look at it, when you do something like that, you test them on, are you spontaneous? Are you one of these mm-hmm. glamor girls that can't like go outside? It's like, you know what I mean? Cause like you have so many things you have to do that I'm like, I can't plan on this whole trip. And there's going to be times when it's uncomfortable. Like we're going to be frustrated. I know right. that, but you have to be yeah. open to that. And like, so one of the rules I made is we don't complain. Like don't compl- like come up with something, but don't complain. I can't can't have that in the car. Can't have that in the car. <sighs> My family we go to Maui, and uh, it's our place where we go. And I'm and I always remind everybody when the plane lands and we when we're walking off. I'm like, yo, what's rule number one in Maui? And everyone's like, yeah, Dad, we know no complaining while in, about, or during the trip to Maui. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, I was like, there's no fucking complaining. Okay. If you're sick, yeah, I mean, well, it's it's better to be sick in Maui than sick at home. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, like the money was like like we were just trying to have a good time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Something was no forgotten. complaining. Yes. Man, I agree with you with COVID um and how it went. It sucked for me personally, you know, as far yeah. as business wise, right? Like well, I shouldn't yeah. say personally. For me personally, it was amazing. Uh why do you no say one, that? I, well, first of all, I mean, you always have to start with the caveat that no one died that you were close to, right? So if, if somebody got COVID in the past, that really makes it suck. Um, yeah. I did have a lot of death, though. Like that, So I did have a lot of death during COVID, of, of, but non-COVID related. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, my best friend overdosed. Oh, man. Right? He, I don't even think he knew COVID. He, he knew it for like a week. And then we had a student commit suicide because we were closed. No. Um, yeah, it was terrible. But it made everything stronger. 
right? It, it made you, you know, it, it didn't break us. And, and that was the key. Like it, it made, it made my relationship with my wife better, with my kids better, with my business better, like everything got stronger. And I think that's what adversity does for people is it, it either breaks you and you crumble and you fade off into non-existence or it makes you stronger. So hopefully we can come out stronger from this, all of us. Absolutely. And I think the other major thing is the importance of family. Yeah. You know, most of the time we never, I mean, especially for you, like you're busy, you got multiple gyms that you like, you're doing a lot of different stuff and like you're teaching the classes, you're coaching the different boxer, like the different UFC people. And like to really have hours with your kids like that is, it doesn't happen. Nor Everyone's at home. There's no one's at home. There's yeah, no everyone's at home. I cooked a badass dinner every fucking night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love I like to cook. Um and it show I think it showed all of us. Uh, you know, for example, what we're seeing now in our schools is a, a mass boom because you have all these people that were like, Oh, I'll do it someday, oh, I'll get around to it, and then it got taken away and you couldn't do anything. So everyone's like, yo. Now that it's back and now that the world's back alive again, uh, everyone's like, okay, no, I can't wait. I'm going to go do it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, it brings urgency. From, urgency. Are you seeing that from like your end? People with their fi- financial aspects is where you land. Um, are yeah. you seeing that from your end where like, you know, people are like trying to take care of their money more skillfully and things like that? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, the whole thing is that, we sit here and we try to, I mean, the other thing with COVID though, you also have to think about it. You couldn't spend money on anything. Oh you, God, you I, like, made, I have, yeah, I made no money, but I have more. Yes, yeah, <laughs> how is that possible? You couldn't travel, you couldn't do anything. Yeah. Like if you wanted to spend money, you couldn't. Like you couldn't. those people that are always going to those, bu- like, so I have to imagine <laughs> that a majority of people are better off because they have more money. Like you have to have more money. So now it's just, okay, we have that more money. What are we going to do with it? Are right. we going to invest it? Are we going to do it this way? Are we going to do it that way? Are we going to pay down student loans because they're blocked because of COVID? Like, they did a lot of, like, the government did a lot for people. And, like, we have to realize that, hey, that's not going to, that shouldn't be the way that we should allow it. But, I mean, to put a pause on student loans interest, that's a good thing. Like, that helps people get, that's your, like, let's escape if we can you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, there's a mm-hmm. lot of people that are making money here and pay down that debt. Like, just pay the debt. You can't just sit there and pretend that it's just going to evaporate. Like, I mean, that's kind of how Biden, it all worked out. He was just sitting there and he's like, okay, we're going to remove student loan debt. And everyone's like, how is that possible? Like, like macro, I can, like, it, it's not possible for him to just wipe off a trillion dollars and then just take it. You know what I mean? We'll see. <laughs> we'll, Who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, everyone's booming right now for sure. We'll see what happens with some of the repercussions of this, right? Like, what is, uh, look, I mean, and I took advantage of the PPP. I had to with my businesses. Uh, we'll see what the world looks like in a couple of years. Everyone, you know, everyone likes to be like, oh, it's great right now. And that must be the, 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 the law that got passed right now. And that's just never the case, right? Like, you, you, yeah. you see your financial mistakes years down the road. Right. You don't, I if think you, it, yeah, it, it takes some time. Yeah. Ali, I think that's genius. What you brought up there, the short term versus long term viewpoint, right? Like short term, it's like, Hey, if I spend that extra money at the bar, who cares? Right. It, but even like for your gym, for instance, if I don't, you saw it there, you are more pivotal than ever. Like students need your gym. Mm-hmm. And if they're not mm-hmm. investing in it, then they're not getting better health but they're also not getting better mental health because it's an outlet for them. Yeah. It's mental health and community. That That's, that's, yeah. that, that's our, and I mean, obviously the physical is obvious, you know, but that's yeah. not the, the, that's not the real thing that, that it is that we do. Um, ours is, is mental health and community for sure. Um, man, as we, uh, as we wrap it up here, I always like to ask people two questions to, to kind of yeah. end the podcast. The first one is, man, why do you do what you do? Like why, why come on the podcast? Like, and, and not because, uh, and I'm not saying this or asking this question in a way of like, Oh, Elliot, you're great. And blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm not really right. Like I'm not Joe Rogan. This is probably, I and mean, I'm not Ferris or any of these other major podcasts that like, if, if they hit you up there, yes. Right. You know, yes. 
really we're just taking an hour out of our day to, to talk to each other and like and, and get the story out of it. So why do you say yes? Yeah, for me, I always like, like I was saying, it's what's the best use of my time? Do I think a conversation with Elliot will be pushing me forward or bringing me back? And honestly, I think it's going to excel me forward. You coming on my podcast is challenging thoughts, challenging ideas. And, and I love that. And for me, also getting on stages, like when you go on a stage, you act a little bit differently and you need to work on that. Not you need to work on that, but everyone right. who wants to be a speaker, it's not like, hey, I went outside and now I'm a speaker. You know what I mean? You got to practice it. If you want to be a UFC fighter, you don't go in the ring once. <laughs> it's like, no, we train a hundred times so that we can get there to that point where yeah. it's okay. Now we're ready. So now for me, ready. I like talking to different people and getting those different reps in and really learning from your experiences, but also learning about myself because you're for asking sure. me questions that I might have not asked myself. Yeah, for sure. Especially on, on that speaker thing. You know, sometimes somebody asked me the other day, I was on a mastermind with like teenagers and they were like, what, uh, teenagers and young 20 year olds. They're like, he's like, man, I want to be a speaker. I want to be a motivational speaker. I was like, bro, you're fucking 18. I was like, you need you need some time in the game first. You, you haven't fucked up yet. Unless you have like an awful life story that you had yeah. to overcome, which is rare for 18 year olds. And you, yeah. you need you go get on some podcasts. Get on some podcasts, yeah. tell some stories, figure out life a little bit. Um, the last question I have is I believe that everyone has a unique power, something that makes them amazing in the world. What's your power? I think my power is the ability to understand and the ability to listen. I know I, I, I do talk a lot, but I think I'm very open-minded in understanding how someone's coming from a certain perspective. But what I like to do with that is be able to explain to them and maybe influence them in what the proper direction is. So you can hear people, they can, they'll say every complaint to you, every excuse to you in the books about something like, hey, I haven't been going to the gym because of this, this, it. But what is it really? Like, what's the underlying? Mm. And it's those deeper questions to really understand people to the point where you're like, wow. That you can draw out the element. super why. Yeah, exactly. Because if we just sit there and go surface level, we're never going to understand ourselves or understand anyone that deeply. Because you, yeah. you can just build a facade around everything. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I, I mean? post. What did I, I post this on on Instagram today? I can't remember what it was. It was kind of a uh, about this topic. What did it say something about the uh, lie all you want on social media, lie to your family and your friends, but the mirror in the bathroom is cold blooded. I love. <laughs> so it. yeah, if you I can't understand you, yourself, yeah. Once you confront yourself and are open with who you are, then mm -hmm. you're able to take on the outer world. Because as, as you were talking about in your TED talk, like, hey, the, the outer world's nice and it can be awesome. But like, if you're not good in the inner world, then how are you going to take on that outer world? Well, then you put on this protective layer for the outer world and, and, and then it, it's going to crack. That that layer is either going to crack or you're going to have to put more layers and layers and layers over it. And you're not even going to be who you are. So for sure. Which is not what everyone wants to be their authentic selves. Yeah, that shit takes and work. That way. <laughs> so, uh, man, tell everyone where they can reach you, where they can listen to your podcast, all that stuff. Yeah, of course. So I got clock, it's hashtag clocked in with Jordan Edwards. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can also find me on Instagram at Jordan F. Edwards. And you can basically, if you DM me there, I'll always reach back out. And because because I came on here, Elliot, I'll let the people, if they want to do a complimentary coaching session with me, more than welcome, just DM me on oh, Instagram. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. Thank you. Absolutely. So, guys, hit Jordan up if you want a complimentary coaching session. Awesome. Guys, as always, go out in the world. Don't try to be Jordan. Jordan has his unique thing that makes him powerful. And I have my unique thing that makes me powerful. So don't try to be Jordan. Don't, don't try to be Elliot. Go out in the world and find your power.